He is the creator and sustainer of all the worlds, whether those worlds are known or unknown to mankind. eyes unclouded by hate does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice hello everyone my name's charlie and welcome to this episode of wisdom's cry yeah t- we are continuing our study today into the prophet by khalil gibran which is now in the public domain so you should be able to do a quick search and find a copy to read along if that's something that you would like to do Today we are picking up with the chapter on prayer. Then a priestess said, Speak to us of prayer. And he answered, saying, When you pray in your distress and in your need, would that you might pray also in the fullness of your joy and in the days of abundance. This is probably the shortest intro stanza in the entire book. And it's one that is so powerful and so meaningful and really says what it needs to say. This is something that I have found with a lot of people that prayer is something done most often when things are bad, when things are rough, when things are tough. And we realize that we need assistance beyond ourselves. So, yeah, that's a problem. This is one of the reasons why I highly recommend you take up the practice of saying your brachat every day, your your, um, blessings every day. And as we've talked about before, this isn't as simple as just counting your blessings or naming them, but actually taking the time to fit whatever good thing is happening. And I think this works very well with both good and bad things to structure it in the classic format. Blessed are you, O Lord, who? So, for example, there's a traditional prayer upon hearing bad news to say, Blessed are you, O Lord, who gave us the gift of hearing because at least I could hear what what was said. And finding that blessing in the darkest of times. And this is a wonderful thing to do, even when good news comes our way. You know? And I don't think enough of us do this. Pray in the fullness of your joy and in your days of abundance. I I just love that. Let's continue from the text. For what is prayer but the extension of yourself into the living ether? For if it is for your comfort to pour your darkness into space, it is also for your delight to pour forth the dawning of your heart. And if you cannot but weep when your soul summons you to prayer, she should spur you again and yet again through weeping until you shall be, until you shall come laughing. When you pray, you rise to meet the air. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. When you pray, you rise to meet in the air those who are praying at that very hour, and whom, save in prayer, you may not meet. Therefore, let your visit to that temple invisible be for naught but ecstasy and sweet communion. For if you should enter the temple for no other purpose than asking you shall not receive. And if you shall enter into it to humble yourself, 
you shall not be lifted. Or even if you should enter it into it to beg for the good of others, you shall not be heard. It is enough that you enter the temple invisible. Okay, let's unpack this. Okay, so I love this idea because this is this is actually what first got me involved with creation spirituality. The very first book by Matthew Fox I ever read was his book, Prayer, in which he makes the very sound argument that our entire life is prayer. Every action that we take is prayer. We are living temples. Our lives are living sacrifices. And in so doing, we pray ceaselessly that every action that we do is an act of prayer. And so when we consciously pray, when we take time to specifically pray, this idea that we are pouring our darkness into space is such a beautiful image, but that we should also pour our, the, I love this, pour forth the dawning of our hearts into the world as well. This is such a powerful image for me because I think all too often we surround ourselves with darkness so that we can escape from the light. In the beginning of the Gospel of John, we have that a definition of light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And through him all things were made, and without him nothing would have been made that was made. And in him was light, and that light was the light of men. And that light shone into the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. Jesus is the light in life. He is, as Paul said, the one who holds the universe together. I think way too often we fear to stand in that light. This is a relic of the old fall redemption theology, which taught us to look at ourselves as broken and unworthy, to look at ourselves as insects, before God. That tradition that defied scripture and said that God made the universe and it's filled with flaws and villainy rather than having been made perfect. In the beginning he saw and said, it is Kitov, it is good. It is good. And this obsession with fall in our fallen nature that many theological schools took and pressed into our culture and into our society so that even if you did not if you even if you weren't raised in a fall redemption tradition if you were raised in Europe the Americas and probably even Australia though I don't have much experience with anything other than the United States, you've probably been drenched in the remnants of this fall redemption mindset. That there is something innately broken, there's something innately wrong with the universe, there's something innately wrong with you, with me, with all of us. And we fear when we step into that blinding light, that light which is life, that we will be shown wanting, that we will have all of our faults and all of the cracks and all of our imperfections put on display. And so we don't step into that light. And we hoard what little light that we gain for ourselves. We do not, in our delight, share the dawning of our joy into the universe. And we have to be careful because we are not those broken creatures that the fall redemption tradition tries to tell us that we are. While we do share in that original wound, 
and that sometimes can lead to brokenness within us. Having a scar, having a wound, does not make you broken. Does it make me broken? And when we pray, we enter that invisible temple. We remember that we are all part of God's kingdom, that we are all part of that pure land, and that it is stretched out upon the world, and we do not see it. For the kingdom is within us. And so when we enter that invisible kingdom with all of the glories of heaven, the angels and saints and the great cloud of witness about us, and all those who pray near us and with us, we should stand in awe. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, be lifted up, O ancient gates, and be opened, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. This is the world that we live in, and when we learn to see the magic in the world, when we learn to see the power in the world, and we see our place in it, So much glory shines, and we choose not to see it. Now, when we get to the bottom here, he says some things that may sound controversial, that when we enter the temple for no other purpose than asking, we shall not receive. Well, this makes sense. If Think, think about it. If somebody enters your house, and every time they come in, it's simply to ask for something, because they want something from you. This is irksome to your soul. When we enter, Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We begin with adoration. We ask that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. See, we ask, but we also give. For I do not ask to be forgiven more than I forgive others. This is the model of prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has given us. And when we pray only to ask, no, we will not receive. And if we enter only to humble ourselves, we shall not be lifted up. Rest in the Lord, and he shall renew your strength. This is the promise that the prophets have delivered to us. That we should rest in the Lord, that we should celebrate with the Lord, that we should dance with the Lord, that we should taste and see that the Lord is good. And if we are just flagellating ourselves and beating the sin from ourselves and, oh, Lord, I am not worthy. Who is worthy of life? Who is worthy of the glorious majesty of life? What would it take to be worthy Now, rest upon the Lord. Rest. Be one with him. Walk humbly with your God. Walk, but walk, walk. Hmm. If you should enter to beg for others, you shall not be heard. Because again, we should celebrate our oneness. We should act as the body of Christ in this world, helping those that we can help, And in so doing, we ask for more. We ask for that spiritual help. We ask for that spiritual guidance. It is enough that you enter the temple invisible. It is enough that we enter the temple, that we stand in the presence of God Almighty, bearing our soul. Because the power of prayer is the recognition that we are doing that. Because that is our nature. We are always in prayer. You are always standing in the blinding light of God. 
we just distract ourselves with the shadows of life. We will continue this more after the break. And we're back. And let's go right back to the text. I cannot teach you how to pray in words. God listens not to your words, save when he himself utters them through your lips. And I cannot teach you the prayer of the seas and of the forest and of the mountains. But you who are born of the mountains and the forests and the seas can find their prayer in your heart. And if you but listen in the stillness of the night, you shall hear them saying in silence, Our God, who art our winged self, is, it, is your, it is thy will in us that willeth. It is thy desire in us that desireth. It is thy urge in us that would turn our nights, which are thine, into days which are also thine. We cannot ask thee for aught, for thou knowest our needs before they are born in us. Thou art our need, and in giving us more of thyself, thou givest us all. This is what we learn when we learn to pray in the Spirit. For when we pray, the Apostle Paul tells us, the Spirit prays along with us in groaning, in words beyond our comprehension. Sometimes when we close our eyes and we open ourselves, we hear the most eloquent words come from our mouth. Sometimes it's just incoherent groaning and pain. This is the prayer of tears, that inconsolable wailing that is the Spirit crying out through us. God listens not to your words, save when he himself utters them through your lips. This is the power of God. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the counselor that Jesus promised to send us that would guide us to all truth. This is the work of the Spirit to pray in us, to teach us to pray, to learn to pray ceaselessly, to pray without end, to never stop praying, to constantly be in prayer, to realize that we are the temples of God. And that when we pray, when we consciously pray, we are entering the invisible temple of Zion, where Jesus, our high priest, stands before the altar, offering himself as life to all who will accept him. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and take my burden, for it is light and easy to bear. Listen to the words of Christ. Listen to his call. And there, in that holy, invisible place, with the angels and the saints and the Spirit of God flowing through us, there, in that soft light of Mount Tabor, as we stand on Mount Moriah in the Temple of Zion, there, in that light, there, in that invisible place, we are one with our sisters and brothers around the world. We are the true body of Christ, united for the reconciliation of the world. For we are called, says the Apostle Paul, to a ministry of reconciliation. We are here to work for the Olam Chaba, for the world to come. We are here to perform Tikkun Olam, the restoration of the world. We are here to raise up the sparks of God, the light of God that is scattered throughout the world and restore it to its proper place, to raise it up so that it is not lost, to find all the secret glory of God in this world that we may have life 
and that the life and light of God may flow through us. And in these moments of prayer, in these moments of deep meditation, we hear the voice of the mountains and the forest and the seas. We hear the stream coursing through us, the song of the birds and the lilting cries of the fields that gave their lives that we might live. The fruit, the vegetables, the plants, the animals, everything that has come together and culminated in us. The air, the rain, the sun, the very starlight that forms your body, the very stardust from which you are built. We hear it all cry out to God in those moments. And if I might update the prayer in more modern English, our God who is our winged self. It is your will in us that wills. It is your desire in us that desires. It is your urge in us that would turn our nights, which are yours, into days, which are yours also. We cannot ask you for anything, for you know our needs before they are born in us. You are our need, and in giving us more of yourself, you give us all. This is the prayer that we will hear in the stillness of our meditations, in the stillness of our night. We will hear in the silence. We will hear the mountains. We will hear the valleys. We will hear the streams. We will hear the seas. We will hear the forests cry out in this prayer. And in our delight, we will sing along with it. We will lift our voice together with them and say it with them. Say it with me. Our God, who are our winged self, it is your will in us that wills. It is your desire in us that desires. It is your urge in us that would turn our nights, which are yours, into days, which are yours also. We cannot ask you for anything, for you know our needs before they are born in us. You are our need, and in giving us more of yourself, you give us all. Because God is in all things. God is in the snow that falls from the sky. God is in the rain that nourishes the field. God is in the plant that gives you life. The food on your plate. God is in your heart and in the heart of all that you encounter, whether they acknowledge that or not. God is in the light that shines from your lamp. God is from the light that shines from your eyes. God is in all things. And in seeking out the Godhead, in seeking to find the presence of God in all things and having more of God in all things, we are not isolating ourselves from the world. We are not denying ourselves the experiences of life. God is in the experiences of life because God is life. God is love. God is justice. And wherever we see love, we see God. Where we see justice, we see God. Where we see beauty, we see God. And when we strive for beauty, when we strive for justice, for victory, for saving grace... In mercy and compassion, we are there bringing God in his fullness into that place. In the hospital where they heal the sick, they are bringing the presence of God more fully into the world, whether they know, recognize, or believe it themselves. Because in these matters, our beliefs don't matter. In these actions, God is present, whether we knowingly invoke the Spirit of the Lord or not. 
Jesus is the one that holds all things together, for in him are all things created visible and invisible. All things are held together in the person of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, working and acting through the hearts of men. In the body of Christ, brothers, sisters, everyone in between, all of our siblings together united in one body to bring about the fullness, the glory of God into this world as we live and act in Zion, as we live and act in that glorious kingdom invisible, as we enter that temple with the angels and the saints and our sisters and brothers and our siblings of all stripes around us. We cry with their pain and we celebrate with their victories. We act as one people in wisdom, in understanding, in strength and judgment, in compassion and loving kindness, in beauty, in glory, in splendor. And through that righteousness, through that justice that is our foundation, we live the kingdom of God in this world. And we live God in this world. God is in us at all times. God is fully present in every moment of our lives, whether we see it or not. All you have to do is surrender to the presence of God, recognize that he is there, and then the power of the Holy Trinity will flow through you. Our Blessed Mother Mary is the matrix of God, and in her loving heart, in her immaculate heart, we are conceived in the form of Christ Jesus to bring healing and restoration to this world. Behold the things that I have done, but I tell you, greater things than these shall you do, Jesus said. And look out into the world now, and you will see those greater things being done. We fly in metal birds through the sky. We have surgeries that they couldn't have even imagined in the first century that save lives, and other therapies that save lives. We understand and see so much more and greater things than these. Oh, the glorious miracle of life is all around us. And as we learn to pray, we learn to live in those miracles. I hope you enjoyed this show. I love this book. I hope you're enjoying it too. If you did, please give me a like especially if you're in iTunes, but in any of the players that you listen to me on, if they let you rate this episode or the podcast in general, please give it a rating and a review. That helps out a lot. That tells the algorithm to share with more people. If you get a buck you can throw my way, that'd be greatly appreciated. I thank you for that. But if you don't have a dollar, you can do that by following the link in the show notes. If you don't have a dollar or you don't feel like giving right now, that's fine, that's fine. I'm not doing this for money. I do not do this podcast for money. I do this podcast because I like to talk about these things. But please pray for me. Your prayers have power. And I say that in every episode, and hopefully today, better than any other day, you understand that. And if you think you know anybody who would enjoy this po podcast, please share it with them. If you want to connect with me, I'm Wisdom Cries Out on Twitter, and you can find links to our Facebook and everything else over at wisdomscry.com. If there's a topic you'd like to hear discussed on this show, just head over to anchor.fm, download the Anchor app, follow Wisdom's Cry over there, and click voice message. You can leave up to a one-minute message. It can be a question, a comment, or a topic you'd like addressed on the show. Keep it clean. I would love to use those. I really love this book. And I like this format that we've been doing, going through a text, and I've been thinking, and I kind of know what we're going to do next, and I can't wait to tell you, but we're not done with the prophet. So, until next time, may God bless you and keep you ever growing in wisdom and compassion. Amen. <laughs>